Eating Disorders The learning objectives are as follows. To understand eating disorders and their complications, the epidemiology of eating disorders, and their basic management. The outline for this topic is as follows. Diagnostic criteria, medical complications, epidemiology of eating disorders, other eating disorders, and basic management guidelines. Anorexia nervosa. The DSM-4 criteria lists four key features of AN, namely a refusal to maintain a minimally normal body weight, an intense fear of weight gain, body image disturbance, and amenorrhea. There are two types of AN, restricting type and the binge eating or purging type. Bulimia nervosa. The DSM-4 criteria lists five key features of BN, namely recurrent binge eating episodes, which are followed by inappropriate compensatory behaviors that occur at least twice a week over a period of three months. The individual's self-evaluation is unduly influenced by body shape and weight, and this disturbance does not occur exclusively during episodes of anorexia nervosa. There are two types of BN, purging type and non-purging type. Medical complications of eating disorders. Eating disorders may be accompanied by many medical complications, some of which are related to weight loss and some are related to recurrent purging. Medical complications related to weight loss include cachexia, whereby the individual experiences excessive loss of fat and muscle mass, reduced thyroid metabolism, and cold intolerance. There is loss of cardiac muscle, which can result in bradycardia and other arrhythmias, such as ventricular tachycardia. This can be a cause of sudden death in eating disorders. In the GI system, an individual can experience delayed gastric emptying, which causes bloating, constipation, and abdominal pain. In females, the reproductive system is affected, resulting in amenorrhea, low LH and FSH levels, and infertility. Individuals with eating disorders often experience edema, as well as the growth of fine downy hairs over the body, known as lanugo. The hematological system is also affected, resulting in leukopenia and a suppressed immune system. Neuropsychiatric complications include mild cognitive disorder as well as depression. In the long term, individuals can also experience osteoporosis, which may or may not be reversible with treatment of their eating disorder. Medical complications related to purging include electrolyte abnormalities such as low potassium and low chloride. This can result in hypokalemic, hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis. Repeated purging can cause GI complications such as salivary gland enlargement and pancreatic inflammation. Raised serum amylase and esophageal and gastric erosions and bleeds. Similarly, purging can also cause dental enamel erosion with corresponding decay. Neuropsychiatric complications include seizures due to metabolic abnormalities, fatigue and weakness, and mild cognitive disorder. Epidemiology of eating disorders. Anorexia nervosa has a lifetime prevalence of 0.9% in women and 0.3% in men. The peak age of onset in females is 16 to 18 years and 12 years in males. At least 90% of affected individuals are female. There is a higher prevalence in occupations concerned with body weight, such as modeling and ballet students and in higher social classes. A diagnosis of AN is often accompanied by comorbid disorders. Studies have shown that depression occurs in 65% of cases, social phobia in 
and obsessive-compulsive disorder in 26% of cases. Bulimia nervosa has a lifetime prevalence of 1 to 1.5% in women, and the age of onset is usually in adolescence or early adult life. BN is rare in males. A diagnosis of BN may be accompanied by a host of comorbidities, including anxiety or other mood disorders, and multiple discontrol behaviors. This includes self-harm behaviors such as cutting or burning oneself, drug overdose, alcohol and substance misuse, sexual promiscuity, and other impulse disorders, for instance, gambling. Other eating disorders exist, of which two are listed. Eating disorder NOS does not meet the criteria for either AN or BN, but is the most common presentation of eating disorders. It can occur in 3-5% to of women aged 15 to 30 years of age. Binge eating disorder describes episodic periods of binge eating without compensatory behaviors to prevent weight gain such as purging, exercise, or dieting. Episodes of binge eating are not linked to cues that conventionally drive eating, such as social setting, hunger, or satiety. These episodes may be associated with distress or other negative effect. To diagnose a binge eating disorder, an episode of binge eating must have at least three of the following features. Eating more rapidly than normal. Eating until uncomfortably full eating large amounts of food despite not feeling hungry, eating alone because of embarrassment of how much one is eating, and feeling disgusted, depressed, or guilty for overeating. Binge eating disorder has a lifetime prevalence of 3.5% in women and 2% in men. Basic Management Guidelines Most patients with AN will be treated on an outpatient basis. Hospital admissions should only be considered if there are serious or life-threatening medical problems, such as cardiac arrhythmia requiring continuous monitoring. Fluoxetin is an indicated pharmacological treatment for AN, especially if there are clear obsessional ideas regarding food. Fluoxetin can also be used to treat comorbid depressive disorders in patients with AN. Psychological therapy has been shown to improve long-term outcome and there is a role for family therapy especially in early onset cases. It is also important to psychoeducate patients on nutrition to challenge over at value ideas that they may have regarding food, weight and body appearance. AN has a prognosis which can be remembered by the rule of thirds. One third of patients achieve full recovery with treatment another third have partial recovery, and the remaining third continue to have lifelong chronic problems. Without treatment, however, AN has a mortality of 18%, either directly from the eating disorder or from suicide. Bulimia nervosa is usually managed on an outpatient basis. However, admission may be needed if a patient is suicidal or has medical complications that require admission. For example, a GI bleed from esophageal tears after repeated purging. SSRIs are indicated for the treatment of BN. Fluoxetin is FDA approved and useful for the treatment of comorbid depression as well. Note that bupropion, which is also an antidepressant, is contraindicated in bulimia as its use can increase the risk of seizures. The best evidence for psychological therapy exists for CBT to address the negative cognitions in patients with BN. There is also a role of guided self-help as well as education and support in a group setting. The prognosis of BN is usually good. Studies have shown that BN has a higher rate of partial and full recovery compared to AN. In summary, both underweight and overweight patients should be evaluated for eating disorders. Non-psychiatric conditions should be ruled out with appropriate investigation before a diagnosis of eating disorder can be made. Once a diagnosis of eating disorder is established, considerations should be made for inpatient or outpatient treatment. Current guidelines recommend both pharmacological and non-pharmacological treatments. 
Given the high morbidity and mortality associated with eating disorders, it is extremely important to identify and treat this group of patients expediently.